Hello and welcome to the final video in the multivariate series. Man, give yourselves a round of applause. You're awesome. So let me begin today by sharing with you a story of how my data set came to be. So back when I was a graduate student, my wife and I owned a photography business, and that's how we paid for my graduate schooling. And as part of our photography business, we also taught photography classes. And we had like five or six different classes, Photo Basics 1, Photo Basics 2, Lighting Basics, Advanced Lighting, and a couple others. In my second or third year of graduate school, I was taking a class on hierarchical linear models or mixed models. And we had a class project where we had to analyze some data. And hey, I figured why not analyze the data from my own business? And at that time, we had recently switched from teaching in our home to teaching in a studio. And we were renting out a place called the Red Room. And the Red Room is basically like this massive brick room that has really bad lighting, but it's great for like holding concerts and parties and that sort of a thing. And the cool thing about the Red Room was we could double our class sizes. So before we were limited to like 11 or 12 people, but now in the Red Room, we could fit hundreds of people if we wanted. Of course, we were concerned about having too large of a class size because we wanted to have a good experience for the students. But um, these data allowed us to ask an important question. And that question was this. When we switched from teaching at home to teaching in the Red Room, did that somehow affect the user experience so much that people were less likely to take the advanced classes? And fortunately, we had data. And so my research question with this data set was this. Once we control for class size, because of course having a larger class size may make a difference. But once we control for class size, is there a difference between teaching the Red Room and teaching at home and people's probability of taking the advanced classes? Here's a problem we have. So obviously we want to predict whether a student progresses onto the next class or not. We got a binary outcome, that's gonna be a logistic regression. But we have a problem. And that problem is that we have clustered data the probability of students advancing to the next class is gonna be highly correlated with their particular class. So normally we'd use a mixed model, right? But we also need to use a logistic regression model. And unfortunately, there is no way to do mixed models and generalized linear models. You can actually do both of them at the same time. Fortunately, there is a way to do mixed models and generalized linear models. So without further ado, let's get to some data. So welcome to my R screen. We're gonna load LME4 as well as Flexplot. And then within the Flexplot package, there is now a data set called photo lessons, photo underscore lessons. And by the way, uh, this requires Flexplot version 0 0.9 or greater. And that uh, fixes some issues that I had with generalized mixed models that I honestly spent the last couple hours of today fixing and it also includes that data set. So you can follow right along with me, woohoo! All right, so I'm going to start as I always try to do by looking at the univariate distribution. So there is the uh, students who progressed and we have, looks like 90 or so that did not progress and about 75 that did. And progress, by the way, means whether they took the advanced classes. Uh, class size, if we look at that, we see it's kind of bimodal, which actually makes sense because again, we taught in two different locations. We either taught at home, which we could only have like 11 or 12 people max. And we taught at the Red Room, which we tried to cap it out at about 20 people. So we should see this bimodal distribution. And then if we look at the number of students in the Red Room, so even though we didn't teach at the Red Room for very long, the fact that we could fit so many people in at once means that more people show up as having been taught in the Red Room. So again, more classes taught at home, but they were smaller classes. So we see that about 100 people had their photo basics class in the Red Room, and then 65-ish people had it at our house. So now, nothing more to do but fit the model. And we're gonna use the function G-L-M-E-R. And if you look at the syntax, it is almost identical to what you would use with L-M-E-R. So just as before, in parentheses, we specify how the random effects occur. So we are saying that we have a random intercept. And then class ID is the clustering variable. And we are saying red room and class size are the fixed effects. And the reason why they're fixed effects was because they did not change within a classroom. So if you were in the red room, you were always in the red room for that class. 
And likewise, if you were, um, if you had a class size of 15 people, you always had a class size of 15 people. Of course, some people might have dropped out part uh, before the end of the class, but still, these are characteristics of the sample of the clusters. They are not individual level characteristics, so we don't need to model them as random effects. So there is our first model where we are modeling red room and class size. Oh, and by the way, we also have that family equals binomial. And basically that tells it that we're going to be fitting a logistic regression in the background. Noise. And I just thought of something. Um, one thing that we ought to do is we ought to model an interaction between red room and class size. And the reason why is because we don't know if those variables are gonna interact. And if they do, we wanna know about it. We wanna be able to see that. So I'm gonna go ahead and modify this. And, and I'm going to change out that plus sign for a asterisk. And so that will now fit uh, the model. Now we can go ahead and fit the two models. And then now if we compare the two, what do we see? By golly, that's kind of interesting. So what is this saying? All right, this is saying that, uh, well, A, it's saying that we do have some evidence at least of an interaction effect. So the full model says that um, if I am at home, larger class sizes mean that we are, uh, that people have a lower probability of advancing. Uh, whereas in the red room, it actually increases it. That's interesting. So maybe, and that, that, I mean, I suppose that could make sense that if we're teaching out of our home, that um, we only have so many chairs. So we could only fit like 10, 11, 12 people. And eventually it starts to feel very cramped because our real living room wasn't all that big. So maybe the larger you get, the more kind of uncomfortable the class is. Whereas in the red room, uh, it was a massive room, so larger sizes meant you had more friends to talk to. I don't know. Maybe that's what's going on, or maybe I'm just interpreting noise. Who knows? Uh, but either way, we do see different predictions from the two models. So if I were just to look at this model, I would say, well, it looks like the full model is probably the better of the two models. But won't know until we look at some statistics, huh? So let's look at some stats. And as we look at these statistics, we've got the AIC favoring the full model, the BIC favoring the reduced model, actually. That's interesting. All right, so the base factor uh, is three. Remember, the closer it is to one, uh, the more ambivalent it is. It can't decide between the two. So this is favoring the reduced model, but it's actually not favoring it that much. P-value favors the full model. Um, and then accuracy, sensitivity, specificity, all that, they're all basically saying the same thing, which isn't terribly surprising with logistic regression models, especially when the predictions are somewhat similar. So, um, what do we do here? Uh, it's actually ambiguous at this point, and that's okay that it's ambiguous. Um, I think it would be unwise of us to make a conclusive, solid decision. We can tentatively go with one model over the other, um, but we probably shouldn't be too confident in it. Now what, uh, next step I might want to do is I might want to visualize. Now let me just show you, this isn't going to work too well if you were to visualize. And the reason why is actually pretty simple. So what happens is in the background of the visualize function, whenever you feed it a mixed model, it's going to randomly sample clusters. So in this case, it randomly sampled three classes. And when it's only sampling three classes, it's only going to have three sample sizes. And so Flexpod is basically going to treat that as if it's a categorical variable when it's actually continuous. We want to see the entire range of class sizes, but Visualize isn't going to let us do that. So um, instead, it would be better just to look at the compare.fits, which we already looked at. Now at this point, we could look at the coefficients, but they're going to be really hard to interpret, particularly for the full model because we got an interaction effect. And by the way, interpreting um, coefficients when there are interactions in the model, that's tough to do for regular linear models. It's way harder for generalized linear models and even mixed models. It's going to be way harder. So we're um, and they're not going to tell us anything more than the visuals are already saying. So we're going to just stick with the visuals. So let's go ahead and look at our graphic again and just do one final interpretation of it. And I'll go ahead and make that bigger just so we can see it bigger. So what are we seeing here? So we are seeing that as class size increases, at least for the full model, we see a decreasing probability that people will take the advanced classes. And at least with uh, when they're not in the red room, when they're in the red room, uh, larger class sizes tend to mean that people like it better. 
But notice, actually, if you... In, I, I, I think I feel comfortable with making a uh, conclusion now. If you look at just the right plot with the Red Room, notice that the majority of predictions are almost all lower than they are in the non-Red Room. So basically what is this saying? This is saying that if I choose to go with the Red Room, much fewer people are going to actually progress than if I stay at home. Regardless of the effect of class size. And then now if we were to look at uh, class size within Red Room Zero or within the cl home classes, it says that, yeah, uh, as you increase class size, people are less likely to advance to a more advanced class. So what kind of conclusions, what kind of decisions would I make as a business owner? And I'll tell you what I did. So I actually did this analysis and it was cool that I had to do it for a class project, but it actually provided insight that I use for my business. So at that point, after doing this analysis, we stopped teaching at the Red Room. And I also did some more complex mathematical stuff that figured out the optimal number of students we should have um, that would maximize the amount of money that we got without sacrificing the number of people that fail to go to the advanced classes. And so we ended up, um, we did move it out of our home. We ended up getting a studio that was much smaller, much more comfortable. And uh, yeah, we ended up teaching for several years after that and taught many, many students and it was awesome. So that is my very brief uh, overview of generalized mixed models in R using Flexplot. And the cool thing is, is it's really not that hard. It's just, you take a mixed model syntax and you add to it the generalized linear model syntax with the family statement, and then you're good. And all the other tools work almost exactly the same as they always did with Flexplot and with compare.fits and with visualize and with model.comparisons, all those things work exactly the same, which is the very cool thing about doing data analysis this way is the tools you use are identical. So with that, that concludes my final video for my multivariate playlist. Give yourselves a round of applause, especially if you have been here for all those videos. That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. I hope you have enjoyed this. Um, please let me know if you have any questions and drop them in the comments below and I will be sure to answer them. And also, now that I have completed the multivariate playlist, I don't know what I'm gonna do next. So if you have an idea of what you want me to cover, please let me know in the description. Can't guarantee I'll get to it, but I will do my best. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time.